starting with Bodvar. Tell me about fluid build up in lower lakes. Tell you about you know, Odvar wants to know about fluid build up in the lower lakes. Okay, that's a very broad subject, but we'll try to cover most of it. The most common cause of fluid build up in the lower lakes in people our age is a chronic congestive heart failure. And in heart failure, you tend to hang on to fluid by virtue of your kidneys inability to get rid of enough salt. So fluid, the fluid accumulation in the body goes to the most dependent portion, and people with fluid in their legs, swollen legs, swollen ankles, generally will have this in the late afternoon and in the evening. They take their shoes off and socks and the ankles are puffy. You go to bed, you lie flat, or even if you're smart, you raise your legs, and the fluid then comes back up into your body and is excreted by your kidneys during the night. So that's the most common cause. Now, that has to do with your heart. There's also kidney problems that will cause you to have swollen legs. And then we get to another very important part, and that's the veins in your legs. Varicose veins are very common. You can get the swelling in your feet again for because you have too much fluid in your body and it goes to the most dependent portion, which is in your feet, your ankles. That again can be treated either by elastic stockings or by elevation of the legs. That's why uh, recliners are so popular among people our age. You get your feet up and it works very well. Also, I think personal preference, uh, electric beds are just terrific because you can arrange the back of the, your head of the bed and the feet of the bed to the foot of the bed to be in the position that you want it. You can raise your the bed and the fluid will come up during the night. Get rid of it. And then if you put on a little elastic, elastic stockings, then you can keep it off for the rest of the day. Okay, varicose veins, chronic heart failure, kidney problems. Well, that's the major things. Uh, yeah, that's a, I think enough for that. Uh, anything else? How about who else wants to ask something? Oh, don't be bashful, please. Go ahead. Charles? Yes, I'd like to ask, uh, since I was a little late getting in here, it's important with this first true thing, as I understand it, that we should not take the first one of these till around the end of October. Is that right? Well, yeah, I would say sometime in October. I would prefer towards the end. Yeah. Uh, that would be the proper time to get it. They're out very, the, the reason they're out very early with this year is because they've made a huge number of doses. Many, many doses more than we need. So people have it early this year. If you remember last year, we had to wait and wait and wait until we had it. We didn't have it until much later in the fall. Uh, so and I think you can go a little bit early. It's better to wait a little bit. Yeah. But, but in this, if I, I hope I read this right, the H1 N1 is now in the composition. It is incorporated into the flu vaccine. The flu vaccine contains three separate entities. There are two, there's an H1N1 virus, and then there's an H1N3 virus, and then there's an A virus. The H1s are Bs, A virus and B viruses. There's one A and two Bs. And the, the flu but did you not suggest also that we should have a second shot, perhaps, around the Christmas time? No, no. I don't, I don't suggest a second shot unless we have a, a really, really bad season with a lot of sickness. And incidentally, while we're talking again about flu, I forgot to mention. Again, uh, we uh, put in a hand disinfectant as you enter the dining room uh, on the wall before you get to the salad bar. Again, 
60 people use the salad bar for lunch, and 80 people use it for dinner. And that means 140 people are touching those tongs. And so I would strongly urge you to use the hand disinfectant if you go to the salad bar. If you sit at the table and the wait waiters and waitresses bring your food, you don't get in where you handle anything that anybody else is going to touch, okay, if you don't want to use it, that's fine. But we really put it in there so you would use it. If you, any of you who have gone on cruises know, know at least in my, my, our experience has been, you can't get in the dining room without sticking your hands out and somebody putting some disinfectant in it. So it's a wise idea to do that in order to, to not pass these viruses which we know, while they're passed in droplets from the mouth and the nose, they're also more prominently passed hand to hand. So if your hands are, if you have an infection in the apartment and you, your hands are bound to be a part of that, then you have to try to disinfect those in order to protect the rest of the population. Obviously, if you have flu, you should stay home but, uh, and get your, takeouts. And I did want to mention that because while we have put that up there, we don't see the general usage that we would hope to see from a preventive standpoint. Talking about the health committee all agrees with me on that.